So good to see you. <laughs> chatter, chatter, chatter. The kids on the bus go chatter, chatter, chatter. I'm sure this week you'll, you'll bear dot in your prayer this week. She's mourning and she's grieving. We went to see her on Friday, but she's, she's being strong and she's being brave, but she has such an awful lot of things to do uh, in the week and the weeks ahead. Uh, we'll let you know through the prayer WhatsApp group or whatever, however way we can do it um, as to when Brian's funeral will be. Isn't church, I said in the prayer time, isn't church like a circle of life? We have a baby born and we have someone leaving us all in the same week. And that's church life, it's, it's life itself. I want to talk this morning, just for a few minutes, just for a few minutes this morning, I want to talk on the title of, You've Got One Job. You've got one job. I'm sure you've heard that said few times, it's been said in our house, you've got one job. So I'm going to use a, a family example. I feel safe using our own family because I don't, I don't offend anybody else. So I won't even mention the name. The person who this refers to will remain nameless and anonymous for their, for their protection. But all you had to do was get the corned beef pie out of the oven. Callum. One job to get the corn beef pie out of the oven. And what does he do? Drops the corn beef pie on the stone floor and spends the next two hours mixing up the corned beef pie and the glass and everything else. One job. We were all out enjoying ourselves at Don and Becky's one job. Bless his heart. Now, we did we'd have a Chinese takeaway afterwards, so it, was quite, it worked out quite well. I'm going to read from the first, I'm going to read from the Bible this morning. I'm going to read exactly the same verses I read last week, which I don't, I don't often do, but I'm going to read the same ones as last week, looking at a different kind of perspective. I'm going to read from John 21 and verse 20, 22, reading from the Message Bible. And John 21, verses 20, 22, exactly the same as last week. And the Bible says, turning his head, Peter noticed the disciple Jesus loved following right behind. I want you to notice those two phrases this morning. The first phrase is turning his head. So while, while Peter turned his head, John, the Bible said, following right behind. Have you got that? And when Peter noticed him, he asked Jesus, Master, what's going to happen to him? And verse 22, John 21, verse 22 says, Jesus said, if I want him to live until I come again, what's up to you? You follow me. You see, What's that to you, which we talked about last week? There are some things we'll never understand. There are some things that we can argue, that we can question, that we can ask until eternity, but we'll never get the answer to. And Jesus said to Peter, whatever happens to John, what's up to you? But Jesus said to Peter, you, looking at him, pointing at him, getting his attention, he said, you follow me. You see, while John was following right behind, the Bible says, Peter turning his head. Distracted. More interested in what was happening to somebody else. Can I ask you a question this morning? Welcome to all the people watching online. I forgot to say welcome this morning. Welcome to all the people watching online. It's good to have you with us this morning. I wonder, has something or someone turned your head? Uh, taken your attention? Has, has something this morning distracted you from, from following? Has something turned your head like Peter, 
uh, turned his head to look to John. Who are you this morning? Are you, are you Peter or are you John? That's my question to you. Because Jesus said to Peter, he said, never mind John. Never mind what happens to John. It doesn't matter what happened to John. What happens to John is none of your business. What's that to you? He said, he said Peter, you follow me. He said, you've got one job. You've got one job, Peter. Your job, Peter, is to follow me. That's it. That's all. Whatever is happening around you, don't turn your head. Don't turn around like the, the um, New King James says, New King James says, Peter, turning around. Jesus said, don't turn your head. Don't turn around. Follow me. You've got one job. And maybe this morning, God is speaking to people. And God, and because you've got questions, because there are things you need to know, because maybe you're being distracted. And Jesus is saying to people this morning, hey, whatever happens outside of you, you follow me. You've got one job this morning. I think we all need reminding this morning that we've got one job. Our job isn't to know everything. Our job isn't to question everything. Our job isn't to understand everything. We could never do that. Our job is to follow him. But there are, there are, there are people maybe this morning are saying, you know what, Dave, that it's okay saying that, but I've got more than one thing to do. I've, you know, I've, I've got multiple things to do. I've got multiple jobs to do. You know, I, I work, for instance. I've got a job to do. Uh, I'm a parent. I've got children to look after. That's, that's my job, surely. Uh, I've got a busy life. I've got more than one job. I've got multiple jobs. You might have a lot of jobs this morning, but every job that you have depends on one job. Every role that we have in life, whether we are a, an employee, whether we're an employer, whether we have our own business, whether we, we are a parent, whether we are a, a child, whether we are a wife or a husband, every job that we have depends on the one job. And the one job Jesus said is to follow me. Everything else depends on how we do that. And that's, you know... One of the things in church life I do enjoy are, are, are baby dedications. I really love the baby dedication part of, of what we do in church, out of all the things that we do, because it just reminds me over and over again about a parent's responsibility. The Bible reminds us that we are responsible for our children. And you know, when, when Paul and Courtney came this morning to dedicate this baby, Colby, it's a reminder that, 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 that Colby is relying on them. But not just this morning, for the rest of his life, he's relying on Paul and Courtney. Your, your children rely on you. Your family's depending on you. Everyone depends on us on doing our one job. And our one job is simply to follow God. Our one job is to follow Jesus. Our one job is to do what he says. Whatever else is important in our lives, there is nothing more important this morning, church, than following God. Nothing more important than following Jesus. Nothing more important than me taking responsibility and following him. You know, this would be one of those weeks again, like I said last Sunday, when I had about questions. and This would be another one of those weeks. When I had to come before God um, during the week and say, and say to God, I, I don't understand, I don't, I don't have a why this, this, you know, this morning, um, but I don't understand. And I came to the conclusion this week, what do I know? I came to the, 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 the conclusion, I know nothing. Really. I don't know why sometimes we pray and people get healed. I don't know why sometimes we pray and people don't get healed. I don't know why sometimes we pray for a miracle and we get a miracle and sometimes we pray we don't get a miracle. Uh, I don't know why sometimes we get an answer to prayer and it's yes and amen and sometimes we met with a sound of silence. I don't know. So I came to God and said, what do I know? I said, God, I know nothing this week. I just know nothing. But I do know this, that I've got one job. And maybe that's helping somebody this morning who's got questions, who 
doesn't understand, who is not quite sure about things and got decisions to make. I do know this, I've got one job. Jesus looked at Peter and pointed to Peter. He said, never you mind about John, you follow me. And that's a word for every person in church, every person watching online this morning, that you follow me. Point number one this morning, let's see how far we get. Time is short. If I get through one point, that'll be a massive achievement this morning. It means you've got to come back next week and listen to point number two. Number one this morning is this. And this, this sounds like a Chinese proverb, but it's not. I made this up myself. But it's a Dave proverb. If you keep turning your head, you'll soon get a pain in the neck. It does sound like a Chinese proverb, doesn't it? It sounds like something Solomon would have written in the Bible. If you keep turning your head, you'll soon get a pain in the neck. And I think this word and this point is for somebody today who's frustrated with questions. Maybe someone today who is angry what happened or didn't happen. Maybe it's somebody today who's confused. Confused by the way that God has dealt with something. Um, confused because it wasn't what you expect and maybe this morning you're full of confusion and shaking your head and not quite sure what is happening around you or maybe this morning there are people who are turning their heads and looking at other people comparing of course you never do that do you you, you, you never turn your head and look at somebody else and compare how they look how they walk What's happening in their life? Looking at people, wondering, have they got more than me? Have they got more likes than me on Instagram this week? Have they got more friends than me on Facebook? You never do that. You never look at people, do you, and then say, you know, are they being blessed more than I am? Always turning our heads, looking at other people. Always turning our heads, comparing looking at other people maybe for approval, for that nod of approval. Maybe he's looking at people for applause. Do they like me? Is it okay with them? Looking at other people, maybe turning our heads and being judgmental. Maybe turning our heads and being critical of somebody. Maybe, maybe turning our heads and judging somebody. Always turning our heads. Always looking at other people. Of course, nobody hears like that. We're all watching online, all those kind of people. No, I'm, I'm kidding. We all do it. If we're honest, we all turn our heads. Sometimes when we're off for coffee, and I hope you'll help me to understand this, because I, I don't understand this, right? But what, what they say when we're off for coffee. Hope, help me to understand this. Sometimes when we're out for coffee, they'll say to me, don't turn around. But look at the person behind you. <laughs> like, like, can you explain that to me? How, 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 how do you look at the person behind you without turning around? And so, I'll obviously just turn right around and say, Dad, we said don't turn around. How am I supposed to look at the person behind me without turning around? <laughs> Turning your head. We all do it. We've all done it. Turning your head. I'm a, I was talking to a, a lady in Starbucks this week while I just said good morning to her and her husband. And they were sat in different chairs to what they normally sit in. I thought, That's, you know, have I offended you? Is there something wrong? And as I walked past, I said, I, I just said, are you okay this morning? This isn't me other church. This isn't me Metro Centre church. Me coffee church. I said, are you okay? Are you all right? sitting in a different chair. She says, oh, she said, I've got spondylitis in my neck. She said, so these chairs help me. And I, I jokingly said to her, oh, you got, you got, you got to, so you've been too nosy listening into other people's conversations, eh? I said, and now you've got a pain in the neck. You see, I was trying the message out. 
just to see if it actually worked. And she laughed, so it was good. And her husband said, yeah, he said, she, 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 she can tell you what the person three table, tables down, what's happening in their life. While at the same time, she's talking to me and having coffee. While at the same time, she's listening to the table two, two, two tables are down. Oh, she, he said, she's always turning her neck. And it's a pain in the neck, isn't it? And we've got questions, haven't we? And we've got things we don't understand, haven't we? And we're always wondering what's happening to somebody else, aren't we? And it's a pain in the neck. And that's why Jesus said to Peter, what is that to you? He said, you, Peter, have one job. You follow me. Never mind what they've got. Never mind what's happening to them. Never mind comparing your shoes against their shoes or your clothes against their clothes or your house against their house or seeing what kind of car they drive, what kind of bag they're carrying. He said, you have got one job. And you'll all know this scripture, Philippians 3.13. Philippians 3.13 says this, New King James. Paul says, brethren, I do not count myself to have, to have apprehended, but he says this, you know it, but one thing I do. Just the one. He says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press forward. He said, I know this. He said, I haven't arrived. I'm not perfect. I've still got questions. I've still got things I don't understand. I'm still confused about a lot of stuff, God. But he said, hey, church, one thing I've learned, one thing I do, I just keep going forward and I just follow. And maybe this morning, that's a word for somebody this morning who is surrounded by confusion, who doesn't have a clue what, what decision to make, who doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow? Who's waiting for results? Who's, who's waiting for interviews? Who's waiting for something to happen? Who's prayed and left you with God and believing this morning that you have one job. And that one job is to move forward and to follow. That's what Jesus said to Peter. And that's what he's saying to you this morning. One job. One job. Point number two, I think we'll finish on this. Point number two is this. If we can learn anything from the conversation that Jesus had with Peter, it's this. Don't be a turner, be a follower. Don't be a turner, be a follower. Through the storm, Jesus says, follow me. He says, through the battle, and there are people going through battles this morning, all kind of battles in our, in our minds, in our hearts, in our emotions, physically, all kind of people going through battles. Jesus said, through the battle, follow me. Just keep moving forward. Just follow me through every disappointment this morning. And I don't know this morning if there is somebody here with the disappointments, or there is somebody watching online with the disappointments, or there is somebody this morning who's been let down, Jesus said, through every disappointment, just follow me. Through every season of tears. And there might be people this morning who are here, who are watching online, and this, this is a season of tears. This is a season of hurt. It's a season of maybe of pain, and we all go through them. We are not exempt from seasons of tears. But Jesus said this, he said, when you go through a season of tears, he said, you have one job. And the one job, he said, is to follow me. Not to let the season of tears distract you. Not to let the season of tears turn your head. Not to let the season of tears turn you around because when we go through a season of pain, a season of difficulty, and a season of hardship, and a season when we feel like God isn't answering our prayer, it, it, can, it can turn our heads. 
And we begin to look at the people and think, well, well, God, you're answering prayer for them. And look at the people and think, well, they're not going through a season of tears. Don't we do that? Don't we do that? We, we have a disappointment and we turn our heads and look at people and think, well, well, they're not having a disappointment. God, you're blessing them. Why don't you bless me? And I believe God is saying to people this morning, if you're going through that season of tears, don't get your head turned. As Peter turned his head to look at John, he took his eyes off Jesus. We can't do both. You can't keep your eyes on Jesus and turn your head at the same time. Jesus said to Peter, don't turn your head, follow me. And I believe there are people this morning who just need to know, when you're going through that season, just, Jesus said, follow me. Through everything that seems unfair, when we look at other people, we turn our head and see that they're being blessed and they're being blessed and they're being provided for and they're thriving and they're growing. And yet in our life, it's hard and it's tough and there's lack. I believe God is saying to someone this morning, when you go through that, when you, when you think everything seems unfair, don't turn your head, don't turn around. Don't get distracted. He said, just, just, just follow me. For all the Peters out there, wondering what's going to happen to other people. For all the Peters out there who, who know the problems that people are facing. All the, the Peters out there who are carrying burdens for the people. All the Peters out there who are carrying stuff, carrying some pain that is somebody else's, somebody confided in you, somebody shared with you, somebody trusts you, and, and, and they've, they've poured all this burden on you, all this pain on you. For all the Peters out there wondering what's going to happen to them, Jesus said, one thing, He said, Peter, you've got one job. Don't turn your head. Don't turn around. He said, just follow me. Just follow me. You know, one thing I do know this morning, of all the things I don't know, I know that God is gracious. I know that. I wouldn't be standing here today if God wasn't gracious. And you know, God, God, we, we are God's children. Have you ever tried to get a child to follow you? <laughs> Just one job. Kids, just follow me and all the kinds of things to get distracted by all the kinds of things you find better to do than following you. all you've got to do is follow me from the car into the shop from the car into the church it's 10 yards looking all over the place and they're doing all of this and they're looking over there and they're tripping over this and dragging along the floor just just that's how God is with us he's gracious to us he says just just follow me he says sometimes I know you're gonna fall he says sometimes I know you're gonna trip I know who you are I know you're gonna trip he says sometimes you're gonna get distracted it's going to be a bang over there and you're going to turn your head there and you're going to stumble. He said, like the kids do. Do anything but walk in a straight line and follow you. It's almost like we've got to teach children to walk in a straight line. And it's so simple, isn't it? And I just believe God is saying to somebody this morning, we, we just put all, everything else to one side and follow 
your eyes on me, keep your ears open to me, let me direct you, God is saying, let me answer all the questions, let me deal with all the whys, Peter, let me deal with all the other people. He says, Peter, follow me, one job. Maybe this morning there's somebody in life has got a little bit complicated. All kinds of a mess there and a mess here and a complication there. And it all happens because we forget about our one job. I think God is just reminding us this morning in a very gentle and gracious way that we go astray, that we wander off, that we, and he's saying, right, just, just come back this morning, just, 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 just come back with me, he said, Peter, follow me, are you a Peter, or are you a John, because all the Bible says about John, there was no conversation, all the Bible says about John, is that John followed closely behind, easy as that, he says, Peter, why don't you, why don't you just be a John, I think he's saying to all the Peters this morning, come on, I want you to be a John. All I want you to do is follow me just closely behind. Stop turning your head. Something turned your head this week? Has something made you turn around this week? Has something made you take your eyes off Jesus this week? Take your eyes off God this week? What God is saying this morning, come on. Follow me. One job. One thing I do. Follow me. Can we pray this morning again as we finish? Can we stand? Thank you so much for listening. Got so much more to say, but there's no time. I'll continue next week. But I want to commit us this week to God. And to be always reminded that we have one job. That's it, nothing else. Your job is not to know why. Your job is not to understand everything. Your job is not to know everything. Your job is not to know what's going to happen in somebody else's life. Your job is not to know why something happened in somebody's life. My job and your job is to follow him. That's it. End of. For the rest of our lives is follow him. Father, I pray for people this morning who might be hurting, might be confused, might be wondering all kinds of different things going through their heads, carrying burdens, carrying pain. And I pray for people this week that this word will just remind us again that turning our heads can be painful. That turning our heads can be distracting. Turning our heads can make us fall and trip and slip. And I pray for people, this word will be reminded this morning, we have one job. And if we do that job well, everything else works out. If we seek first the kingdom of God, it's going to be okay. Remind your people, God, this week of one job. And we will follow you the rest of our lives. Every day, the rest of our lives, Jesus, we want to follow you. And we ask us in most powerful name. Meet every need this week. In Jesus' name. And everybody agreed and said, Amen. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.